<laughs> All right. <laughs> Good morning. I see so many beautiful faces out there. <laughs> Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in the heart of Las Cruces. Another beautiful Sunday morning to be together. I'm Sarah Benson. This is my husband, Doug, and we're going to start you with a couple of songs. If I invite you to stand if you'd like. If not, that's cool, too. <laughs> Thank you. Before I um, start reading the announcements, I want everyone to turn around and see our Reverend Bonnie here. Yay. Yay for, 
you got the memo. We're wearing the same color. Yes, we're on the same wavelength. And so blessed to, to be to see you here today walking around. So life is good, isn't it? All the time. So my name is Teresa Valenzuela. I'm a spiritual licensed practitioner here at the Center for Spiritual Living in the heart of Las Cruces, where our vision is a world in loving partnership for the good of all. And welcome to anyone visiting for the first time. I see that um, I think Deb already gave our visitors. You want to raise your hand? I'm going to put you on the spot. A visitor packet and oh, excuse me. And in that. Uh, packet, there is a 10% discount for our most amazing, wonderful bookstore gift shop, Wisdom Through the Pages, there in the corner, that Jennifer's holding down for today. So please visit our bookstore before you leave. <laughs> and on that note, we have new books. We have new art by um, Mary Bars in there. I call them angel windows. We have Amazing bookmarkers, because I'm a bookmarker freak, so please come look and see what's new in our bookstore. And, oh, here it is. Please be sure to read our newsletter as well. I'm wondering why I'm getting, is it me? No. Oh. Um, my energy is just flowing out this morning. <laughs> so also don't forget we have our newsletter that's sent out each week. And if you want to know what's going on, because there's a lot going on in the center, uh, please let me know and I'll be sure to add you to that before you leave today. I think the newcomer packet has um, an information card. And I want to say hello to those of you on Zoom. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We can do it without you and without Bob. And without the musicians, our guest speakers, and everyone that's here, so thank you. Or me. Oh, yes. Um, but today, our special guest speaker, and I just want to say our special speaker, because this is just the first of many times you're going to visit us. I know that. Um, Brian, now we're spelling it incorrectly, but it's Kurtz. Yes, it's Kurtz, K-U-R-T-Z, from up north. And right after service, after his wonderful wisdom and, and love heart. He will be doing a workshop, Soul Connection, at will. And he's here right here today. This is the day. So please, uh, I hope you plan to stay after service for that amazing workshop. And looking ahead, do you all have your calendars? So here we go. September 7th, we're having a metaphysical fair here at um, the center. And so if you'd like more information about possibly having a table, um, you can call the office. Uh, tomorrow and get that phone number for uh, Sabina Green, who's handling that. And October 26th, do you have that on your calendar? It's our fall treasure sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clean out your houses. It's time to become minimalists. And on November 16th, our second annual craft fair that Miss Deborah here instigated last year. And here it goes, second year. So start making your crafters. We noticed food goes really well, goodies. Um, but that'll be on November 2nd. And now I want to remind each and every one of us that we believe in the power of prayer. And we call that spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. There are prayer request cards in the chair backs. And please, we'd love to pray with you to align our own hearts. We meet every Tuesday, ministers and practitioners in this area, the New Thought um, community in this area. We we meet and we pray with you and see miracles happen. Uh, we forget, right, all those God stories. Um, Can they share a miracle? Absolutely. Can I share a miracle? You have to talk real loudly, though. Thank you, everyone, for holding me in your prayers for these last two years. I start my job on Tuesday. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, there's no calendar in the universe, is there? It happens when it happens. We needed you in here for the last two years doing everything you've been doing for the center. And now I was wondering, I was disappointed when I saw that person leaving, but now I know why the vacuum was created for our very own Carrie. Thank you. 
Oh, okay. So our lovely Carrie, who's on our board, and, and when she started coming here two and a half years ago, started with the book study in March. I remember that, 2022. Uh, she had moved here from Phoenix, from ASU, and she was ready to find a job here locally. And she's gone on several interviews, and, you know, she's just this amazing librarian, archaeologist. I'm just going to name all these things, those two things I know especially about you. And just hadn't found that place, hadn't been called back, hadn't. And now she is going to be the director of the Doniana Arts Council, which is an amazing, amazing organization here in Las Cruces. So I am so blessed for for us in Las Cruces and for you especially. So thank you. Thank you. Yay! Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Um, and that's what happens when we put that power behind our word and that we pray all together as one. You know? Uh, that's what happens. So... Thank you for sharing that miracle, that blessing. And now I'm all like in a flutter here. Oh, so if you want to put your prayer requests, right? So that happens. Whatever it is that you feel and you know needs to be happy happening, you can leave your prayer requests. Either uh, we have an offering uh, basket, or there's a, a a prayer box back there. You can stick it in there, and we will get to it. And we would love to hear. Thank you for verbally telling us your miracles, but there's also in the chair backs a card for you to share um, the manifestation of what you've been working on, because prayer is ah, amazing if we step aside and allow that energy to flow through. So um, after service, the practitioner's wearing stoles. I see Judy here, and Bob found his stole. He did not find his stole. So if you stole his stole, please let us know. <laughs> but he is ready for prayer. And so um, that's after service. And, and now it is time for song, silence, and prayer. sees a new dawn at midnight. Love sees miracles in broken things. Love sees riches in everyday blessings. Love sees in barren places living spring. speaks to conflict with kindness. Love speaks to guilt with overflowing grace. Love speaks to doubt with trust and faith. Love speaks of hidden light in every face. Love sees, love speaks, Love alone knows truth. Love sees, love speaks. Love alone is truth. Love knows all life is precious. Love knows what we need is already here. Love knows right now is holy love knows perfection beyond how things appear love knows perfection beyond how things appear Oh, so with a huge smile on my face, I invite you to join me with that gladdening of heart, spirit, and mind, and thoughts, that as we enter into this time, we are reminded that we are truly one, 
and that we celebrate ourselves and each other, that we support ourselves and each other, and that we allow it to be the I am. And so this morning has already started on such a high note of love and kindness and manifestation and so many good lessons. And so grateful for each and every person that does what they do so that our doors are open and our chairs are filled and our hearts are ready to allow that peace and love that we are, each and every one of us, under that oneness that we are, we allow all of that and more to radiate out. Outside of this building, outside of the Zoom room, outside into our communities, wherever we find ourselves in this moment, and just allow that love and energy and kindness to just go around the globe, the planet, out into the universe, knowing that we are here to be the difference and that we are making a difference and that we take that action so that love definitely is here to reveal the truth. And so grateful for Brian to be sharing his time with us through the talk and the workshop after. And just knowing I am exactly where I need to be in this moment. And just allowing all of those words to be released, to be unfolded and evolve in the, into the fruition of love. And so it is. Thank you, Brian, for allowing me to pick the reading today because that led me on a search. And I found the December 2018 Science of Mind was on Forgive and Fulfill. And for some of you who may not know, I've been on this journey over the last four months, really wrestling with the idea of forgiveness. And what I realized this past week um, is the forgiveness I was struggling with was forgiving myself to stepping into the authentic me, knowing that everything's going to be fine but I need to be aligned in my own integrity and I need to forgive myself for my courageous being. And so I found a reading in The Science of Mind, December 2018, The Gift That Keeps on Giving by Anthony Diaz. And I wanted to read the whole five pages, but I know that that's uh, not going to happen. So I've, I've, I've uh, highlighted what I, I would like to share with you. Um, and I have to pick up my book here. Can you remember <laughs> when your iPad decided to go to other pictures that were not part of what you wanted to share? OK, here we go. And that's not it either. Thank you, technology. I gave you applause. And there's pictures of my dog right there. OK, thank you for your patience and your love. Can you remember when you were younger playing with your friends with nary a care in the world? I sure do. And what floats to the top of my awareness is that we would have many disagreements, some of them small, others maybe more heated and animated. And looking back, my memories of the outcomes are always the same. No matter how much we fought, we always, always figured out a way to make up and move on. Staying friends was more important than staying mad at each other. In hindsight, as my friends and I matured, our disagreements seemed to be more challenging to mend. What was it about being a child that made it seem simpler to move past conflict? What is it that gets in the way when you're older? Actually, the answer is the same to both questions, forgiveness. When we come into this physical being, all of us are blessed with the same inner treasures, knowing only love, joy, and happiness. The only proof you need is to look at a baby. We may not have known it back then, but many times resolving conflict and being able to move on from it was an effect of forgiving our friend and ourselves for what had happened. In reality, Every time we relieve our past resentments and we practice forgiveness, 
or put forgiveness aside, we are repeating the same story that keeps us in our own personal state of bondage. Forgiveness is the key. How so? It invites us to write a new script to our story. So are you ready to write a new script in your story? He also had an affirmation, and I'll make copies um, if you'd like to take a copy when you leave here today. This is the affirmation that Anthony added to his article. I release and move this ex- through this experience, and the power is over me easily and effortlessly. I let go of any pain or hurt I felt, knowing it no longer serves me or my life. I am open to those experiences that serve and support me on my journey. And I would like to add, they all, good or bad or indifferent, gray, black or white, all have helped me on my journey. And so it is. This next song is a powerful reminder that uh, God is not fickle in chasing after me. This is I Am the Place Where God Shows Up by Eddie Watkins. Am I strong enough to bear the burden that sometimes comes living this thing called life? enough to make the right decision when I'm standing at the fork in the road. Sometimes Sometimes I wander and ponder only to realize I'm not alone. There's nothing I have to do on my own. Cause I am the place where God lives. Moves and breathes and has its meaning. I am the place where God shows up. I am the place where God lives. Moves and breathes and has its meaning. I am the place where God shows up. Will I have enough to do the things? I need to do to take care of myself Will I have enough of mind and body To live a life of grace and wholeness Sometimes I wander and ponder Only to realize I'm not alone There's nothing I have to do on my own Cause I am the place where God lives Moves and breathes and has its being I am the place where God shows up I am the place where God lives Moves and breathes and has its being I am the place where God shows up You are the place where God lives, moves and breathes and has its being. You are the place where God shows up. We are the place where God lives, moves and breathes and has its being. We are the place where God shows up. We are the place where God shows up. We are the place where God shows up. And here we are, showing up. Thank you. Now, let's get to the, I want to say the meat of the morning, but every everything has been a wonderful um, little piece of the mail today. And so I want to introduce Brian Kurtz. He's a teacher and energy worker who calls in spirits, power, and love to heal physical, psychological, and emotional issues. Brian's divinely inspired method includes chakra and life history energetic residue clearing, 
client-specific healing, and divinely inspired guidance sessions. Brian also works with children and pets, homes, and workspaces. His Real You conversation will support you in reaching your own soul and allowing that to guide you through life's greatest challenges with grace and ease. And here comes Brian. Thank you. This is going to be a challenge because I've got a camera right there, and I like to move around. I'm loud enough to carry, but I'll use the microphone and try and kind of keep it under control here. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for having me. Um, where I'd like to start is for you to notice, oh, before I even do that, how many people have issues? <laughs> how many of you are lying about not having issues? Okay. What I want you to know is that the issues that you may perceive aren't from you. They're from this thing called a brain. And you are not your brain that moves around at a thousand miles an hour. You are the noticer of the brain moving a thousand miles an hour. And I'll show you how that works. I just want everybody to play along and repeat after me. You ready? I am noticing the thoughts my brain is generating. Awesome. So who is the I? In fact, I'm going to pick on Reverend Bonnie because she's back there and I know who she is. Oh, why do you have to do it to me? So Reverend Bonnie, who is the I that you just mentioned that's noticing the thoughts that your brain is generating? The real you, that's exactly right, because that's the title of my book, Access the Real You, and Touching Your Divinity and Applying Its Wisdom to Your Life. How do you do that? Well, that which wants to know the how do you do that is what's in the way of you not just doing, but being that. Because your doingness always follows the beingness. So we're going to cover a lot of ground today. So I'm going to talk a little fast. And don't even bother trying to take notes. Back in the back on the little wall back there is a stack of papers, which is the notes from everything I'm about to say. So you can just be present, be with me, and see where it all leads you. Okay? So you've got this brain moving a 1,000 miles an hour, and you can notice, the real you, can notice the thoughts your brain is generating. You with me so far? Okay. So... You've got this brain, you've got an eye that is noticing the thoughts your brain is generating, but I'll say then, where is the eye? We talked about who is the eye. The better question is, where is that eye located? Because I assert that that eye has got to be just outside your brain a little bit where it can notice the thoughts your brain is generating. And where is that space? Well, that which wants to know the where is what's in the way of you being with it. That's going to get a little weird, but just kind of, I'm kind of weird, so just kind of be with me here. So you've got a brain that's noticing the thoughts your brain is generating. And your brain is moving 1,000 miles an hour. But guess what? You're not that. Like when it's time to meditate, you don't say, well, gee, uh, how can I get my brain to sit still so I can meditate? How about having your meditation be... Noticing your brain move a thousand miles an hour and allow your brain to move a thousand miles an hour while the noticer is in stillness, watching your brain move a thousand miles an hour. Much easier for Mr. ADHD brain here, okay, to be the noticer of my brain moving a thousand miles an hour. Now, here's the next piece. This is going to be kind of a weird question, but it's a new thought congregation, so I'm figuring you guys are down with it. Where is God? Everywhere. I love it when I come to a New Thought congregation because everyone knows that or seems to. So, yes, God is everywhere. Is there anywhere God is not? Even beyond time and space, God is everywhere in everything, right? So if God is everywhere in everything, even beyond time and space, where does God have to go? Nowhere, because God's already everywhere. So if God's already everywhere, thus God has nowhere to go, God must be operating in stillness. Because God's already there. So if God is in stillness and we want to get to that place, how do we access that stillness? We access that stillness by notice what's not being still. 
If you can notice what's not being still, you are placing the real you in stillness, watching what's not still. And it's really counterintuitive to think, oh, well, wait a minute. The way I access stillness is by noticing what's not still. The way you access silence is by noticing the noise. Does the noise ever stop? I don't care if it's the media. I don't care if it's your brain. The noise never stops. But you're not the noise. You're the noticer of that. So ultimately, you are the noticer of your brain and its thoughts. And you are the noticer of your body and what's going on in there. And you can be the noticer of your circumstances and whatever's going on in your life. But guess what? You are none of that. You are the noticer of all of that. So when you've got an issue, oh, by the way, as you're noticing the thoughts your brain is generating, you're going to notice I got some issues. Now, what is an issue? By definition, every issue has some things in common. There's always a point A. I call it, which is what's so about whatever it is, the data, the facts of the matter. And there's a point B, which is what I prefer instead of point A. Is there ever anything that doesn't have a preference? Well, I got $1,000 in the bank. I wish I had $2,000. I got a million dollars. No, I don't have a million dollars in the bank. I wish I had $2 million. He said this. I wish he'd said this. She did this. I wish she'd have done that. Everything that you can come up with, that you can notice, that you can notice, has a what so and a what you'd prefer instead. Point A, point B. Now, the thing is, what has your point B be a point B? That, this is where the self-study comes in. But how do you do the self-study? Well, there's three ways that I recommend you work after any issue, whatever it is, no matter how big or how small, there's three ways to go about any issue. You can work on resolving the issue. And then after you've done everything you can, and oh, by the way, we're going to cover on how to resolve the issues, in case you're wondering, in case your brain is off on that for a second. You can work to resolve the issue, but sometimes there are going to be issues you can't resolve. At that point, you've got to refine who you're going to be about the thing you can't resolve. And after you've done the resolving, maybe it doesn't work out, then you've done all the refining you can do, and you still sometimes have some stuff left, it's time to release what remains. Resolve, refine, release. You with me so far? Okay, let's talk about resolve for a second. Ultimately, what resolve is, is I'm right here, point A, and I'd like to get to over here, point B. But how do I do that? And what kind of perspective do I need to really work on resolving the issue? Because if you've got a brain, your brain is going to be judging whether or not you're doing it right or whatever it is that your brain might happen to be judging at the moment because you're trying to get from here to there. So the first thing to notice is I'm here. I want to get over there. How many times is your brain going to get in the way and say, but I don't want to be here. I want to be over there and I must be wrong because I'm right here instead of where I want to be. But guess what? You had to get to here to even notice that there's a there. So congratulate yourself on getting to where you've gotten to to see the thing you're not at yet. And the brain is going to judge that as good, bad, right, wrong, up, down, you, me. You know, what does the brain do? It's always comparing what's so to something else. This is how politicians in this election year manipulate us. I'm not going to ask you which side you're on. It doesn't matter. You've got a brain, and it's going to be doing what it's going to be doing about the whole thing. But what a politician's job is, theoretically, besides serving the, the world, is to get you to vote for that person, which is just, I'm going to convince you or touch you to get to where I want you to be, where you think you need to be. It's think. But that thinking is not here. This needs to know. This wants certainty. This wants, how do I get from point A to point B? This already knows. This is the place where you know you know. When you know you know, do you need any reasons? Do you need any justifications? This requires justifications and reasons and becauses. If you're stuck in a because or a reason or a justification, guess where you are? 
It's a long way from here to here, but we can get there. So that's part of the perspective of working to resolve an issue and not making yourself wrong about it. If I'm going to drive from here back to Albuquerque, where I am, the great, the great north, is, as Teresa mentioned earlier, i got to go through truth or consequences and, you know, Socorro. I'm, if I get to Socorro, am I going to make myself wrong because I'm not in Albuquerque? No, because I'm just on the way. But how many times do you get to that place where you're on your way, but you're making yourself wrong because you're not there yet? What we can do is to notice. And who we can be is the noticer of our brain comparing this to that. Frightfully simple, but not easy. Because we tune into this thing and forget that this is there. Because this doesn't need to get loud. This just knows. This needs to be loud. And when this is loud, we start paying attention to that. But that's what's usually in the way. The thing is to drop down into that place where you know that you know. So let's say you're doing all of this stuff to resolve whatever the issue is, and it just doesn't. Part of the mistakes I've made that helped me learn what I now know is I had a couple of marriages, and I got a couple of sons from a couple of exes. Those marriages didn't resolve. What was I supposed to do? I tried. Years of therapy, God only knows, all right? Lots of stuff didn't resolve. So ex number one and I, she was kind of angry at the world, and I kind of backed away and said, okay, you go be angry over there. She's since grown and changed and become all of who she's here to be, and God bless her, and she's wonderful. Ex number two is was kind of, God bless her too, she's kind of a dysfunctional mess. Guess what? 20 years later, she's still kind of a dysfunctional mess, but she's doing the best she can with what she's got. So I couldn't resolve the issue, but I could refine who I was going to be about it. So in my refining, I learned patience. I learned tolerance. I learned love and forgiveness. I didn't say like. There was this guy, Jesus, who was around a couple thousand years ago, and some guy was trying to, you know, trip him up. Because, you know, Jesus is a rabbi. I grew up Jewish. I know a little bit about the Old Testament. Then I became this born-again Christian. I had this really wild Christian experience that left me no choice but to believe that this Jesus guy was who he said he was. But I don't do dogma because I grew up a Reformed Jew. I can't do dogma. So what Jesus taught, I'm standing behind that. I love that. But I can't do the dogma that some people have attached to it. But if you, you know, I don't want to go way off into that. But the point is, Jesus was this really cool teacher. And when the guy said, all right, Jesus, what's the biggest commandment? Knowing that there were 613 of them, Jesus tripped him up. He says, love God with all your heart, soul, strength, mind, which, by the way, is one of the, it's the opening of one of the two prayers in every Jewish service. That, he knew that would shut the guy up. The second part, which he said was the same as the first part, is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, I think that it's kind of a reverse order thing. I think the church kind of rewrote that to confuse us and put the most important part last. It needs to be learn to love yourself. And it, because who do you know better than yourself, right? Who do you judge more readily than yourself, right? If you can learn to love and forgive yourself right where you are. I didn't say like, because like is a comparison between what's so and what I'd prefer instead. If you can learn to love yourself with all your stuff that you know you've got, and I don't care how much you've evolved, there's always going to be more stuff. But what compares one to the other, right? That's what this does. If you can get to a place of loving yourself as you are, where you are, knowing you're not done yet, your book is not finished being written, then you can come to forgive yourself for the stuff that you're not yet. That's part of the refinement process I had to learn. To be okay with those things in my marriages that couldn't resolve. And it's a process and it never ends. Can you cut yourself some slack? I hope so. Anyway, that love your neighbor as you love yourself. Until you love yourself, you can't really love your neighbor. 
Because you're going to see your neighbor and you're going to connect with your neighbor and you're going to see stuff about your neighbor you may not be happy with. But the you that's not happy with is this, which is always comparing something to something else. And you're not your brain, you're the noticer of it. So notice that you can notice that and you'll be well on your way to refining who you need to be about whatever the issue might need to be that maybe you can't resolve. And then what happens if you've done all the refining you can do and there's still stuff left? About, I'm going to cry a little, excuse me. A little over six years ago, I lost both of my parents in about three weeks, three and a half weeks. Mom was already kind of delicate. Dad was doing everything he could to take care of her, and he was micromanaging everything about her, and he had gotten in the habit of micromanaging the micromanaging of everything, because that was my dad. I came by it honestly. And Mom got really sick. She got so sick, Dad finally said, I can't do anymore. I'm going to take her to the hospital. So he, he realized, I don't know if I'm really up to it. I'm just going to call the ambulance. It's a little town, Opelousas, Louisiana, a little, little Cajun town. And so he calls the ambulance. It took him about two minutes to get over because it's a little town. They pick her up. They get her on the gurney. They get her in, into the ambulance. And they look at him and they say, you know, Mr. Kurtz, you don't look too good either. Hop in. So he hopped in the ambulance. They got there to the hospital. They get mom all checked in. Then they look at him and say, you got walking pneumonia. You're contagious. We're not letting you leave the hospital. And because you're contagious, we're going to put you on this wing. But your wife is going to be over here in this wing. Dad couldn't micromanage mom. He freaked out to the point that he stroked out and died his first night in the hospital. Three days later, mom comes out of her funk. Where's my husband? Well, he died three days ago. So she literally willed herself to death over the next three weeks. So in three and a half weeks, I lost both of my parents. Guess what? I can't resolve it. I've done all I can to refine who I'm going to be about it. But oh, by the way, I still shed tears when I think about it. Comes in kind of handy to deliver the message. But, you know, it's still there. So what do you do with that? You release it. Because I can't resolve it and I can't refine any further. So I'm going to demonstrate release. Watch closely. Got my keys. Watch closely. That's release. In case you missed it, watch. Okay, that's release. Now notice, what did I have to do? I opened my hand and I let it fall, okay? But these are the brain-generated conditions that prevent us from just letting go. We're always trying to figure out with this thing that figures, how do I, when can I, but what if, right? But here's the thing. If you've worked on all of these, but you still got this one left, you can't release. Forgiveness is release. When I'm, again, I'm no biblical scholar. I've read Old Testament and New Testament quite a bit, but I don't remember all the details. Jesus was teaching forgiveness to his disciples. Couldn't tell you which guy brought it up, but he said, look, Jesus, we've been learning this forgiveness thing. I'm working on it, Jesus, but there's this guy in the village. I think I've forgiven him, but every time I see him, he gets my goat. It's 2,000 years ago. He probably really had a goat. And he's like, what do I do, Jesus? This guy, can I, can I say pisses me off? Can I say that? Okay, so he said, Jesus, what do I do? I can't seem, I think I've forgiven him, but how many times am I going to have to forgive this guy? And Jesus gave him a very symbolic response. He said, you're going to have to forgive him 70 times seven times. Now, that's a symbolic way of saying, dude, you're just going to have to forgive him forever, as many times as it takes. Not don't be a Bible literalist and say, all right, I forgave him 490 times, now I can go kick his butt. No, that's not what it means. But you can continue to forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive. How many people here find it much easier to forgive someone else than themselves? Welcome to the club, right? But guess what? That which is not forgiving you or that which has you need to forgive you and everybody else a million times is this. Because this always forgives. This always loves. But how do we get there? This wants to know the way to hear. The way you get to hear is by stepping back from the brain 
and ground yourself in this other place. Because when you're being the noticer of your brain chatter, you're actually separating the real you from the brain chatter and grounding yourself in this other place, in the stillness where God is, where divine wisdom comes in. But wait a minute, I'm just a guy. No, you're not just a guy. Because how many people have seen the picture of an atom? You know, little atom, protons, neutrons, electrons, okay? Most folks have seen that picture in eighth grade science class. Actually, in Louisiana, where I grew up, it was probably high school science class. But the point is, it's there. And what happens is most folks have seen the picture, but they don't realize this sucker is not drawn to anywhere near to scale. If you were to magnify the atom to the point that the protons and neutrons in the middle were the size of little glass marbles, like marbles we used to play with as kids, the first orbiting electron would be 10 miles away from the marble. That's a lot of space. And these electrons are grouped by distance, called shells. The next shell of electrons from the marble would be at the moon. 31 Earth diameters, 250,000 miles from the marble. Marble, moon, right? The next shell would be at Jupiter, which is farther away from us than we are from the sun. You getting the idea of how much empty space there is in an atom? Now, how could anything still be held together over these literally astronomical distances? Energy. Electromagnetic energy that's so powerful that if you can access that energy, you could power a city with it. That's atomic power. Or you could blow up a city with it. That's atomic weapons. But the point is, there's this huge amount of energy holding that atom together. Well, guess what? I think God is the source energy of that energy that's holding every atom of everything in the known universe together. What are we made of? We're made of atoms which are mostly empty space, which means they're mostly God energy, which means, guess what? You are mostly God stuff. You are a soul in a body. You're not a body that's got a soul. You're a soul sourcing a body. You are quite literally 99.9 .9 to the millionth power, mostly divine energy. We're so much mostly empty space, I don't even know how we see each other. <laughs> we ought to be able to all walk through walls and stuff, right? But the point is, in the awareness, not the awareness that you have, but in the awareness that you are, you can connect to that. And, I mean, you know the word namaste, okay? The divine light in me is able to see and bear witness to the divine light in you. Here's the thing. If I'm not present to, with the awareness that I am, present to that divine energy that lives in me, that light in me, I can't see the light in you. If I'm in that place, I can connect to anybody and everybody in that place. Anybody and everybody in the love that I am, in the love that God is. Not in the like or preference of me toward somebody else. It's not about liking anybody or anything. It's about loving them anyway. I recommend each of you every day stand in front of the mirror for a, as long as it takes. Could be five seconds before you run away or maybe it's 30 seconds before you want to run away. Make eye contact with the person in the mirror until you see them until you feel them. And right about, that per right about the time that person in the mirror is starting to freak out, love them. And then do that to everybody else. Even the ones, especially the ones you don't like. Because in the oneness that we are, we're already all connected in the oneness. We're already one. That's the first prayer in the Jewish religion. Hear this, Israel, the Lord our God is one. Not just one God, but the Lord is one. It's all one. In the oneness which we have access to by the awareness that we are, we're able to light somebody else up. 
If I'm in that divine light place and I make eye contact with you, I can wake up and catalyze and ignite that spark in you whether you're ready to be there or not. Because when I'm in the oneness and I make eye contact, not just eye contact, but capital I, eye contact, we can connect. No matter what label you want to put on anybody, whether they're bald or have a beard or wear weird colored shirts or whatever it is, whether they got veins on their nose or their nose is a little crooked or a little large or points off in a weird direction, all that stuff that I could judge about myself that I'm not necessarily thrilled with, but it's what I got. You got what you got. Can you love yourself anyway? When you can, you can learn to love everybody else with their stuff anyway. Then we can come to know how much God must, must love all of us with all of our stuff. God's given us how many hundreds of thousands of years to figure this stuff out? There's still wars all over the planet. Why? Because we're letting this run the show. When everyone's connected, there can't be any war. Who would we want to kill? Who did Jesus advocate killing? Jesus didn't say, love your neighbor as you love yourself unless or until. No. Be the you that you're here to be and allow that to evolve and continue to grow. We're all here just doing the best we can with what we got. So what I request of everybody is to be the noticer of the thoughts your brain is generating. Be the awareness that you are, noticing what's not that. Because it's really not a part of you. It's just this thing that we notice. It doesn't mean anything. But boy, we take it pretty seriously. But that which is taking it seriously is what's in the way of you just being the awareness that you are. So love yourself where you are. As the divine being, you are literally sourced by God and are of that. Wayne Dyer talked about like you're, you're like a bucket of the ocean. You may not be the whole ocean, but the nature of the ocean is in your bucket. The wholeness of all that is is in you already. So what's missing? What's missing is the awareness that you are already that, that everyone here is already that. The folks who are walking down the street who know nothing about new thought are already that. There are no exceptions. And any time this comes up with an exception, notice that there's an exception that this generates. But that's not you. All there is is oneness. Be that. And remember that that's all there is. And anything that we think might not be that is just this. How do we turn that off? I didn't say anything about turning it off. Your brain is a vital organ in the body. This pumps blood. Your lungs pump air. Your stomach pumps stomach acid. Your brain it does a lot of stuff, but for the purpose of this conversation, your brain's pumping out thought. It's a vital organ. A vital organ means if it stops working, you're dead, or it better be replaced with a transplant really fast. This is going to do what it's going to do, but you're not this. You're the noticer of it. So allow that. Allow it to teach you. If there's a point A of what's so and a point B that you'd prefer instead, study the point B. Work on the resolve, refine, release process. And don't start with the release, because then you're just sweeping stuff under the rug, and sooner or later you won't be able to see across your living room. The point is, do your best, and know that you're doing your best. And your best today may not be as good as your best yesterday, or it may be better than your best tomorrow. It doesn't matter. That which is comparing is this, and you're not this. You're the noticer of that. That's the biggest lesson there is. You are not this thing. You are the noticer of it. There's a workshop coming up after where I'm going to teach anyone who doesn't already know how to connect deeply in the time it takes to inhale and exhale. If that sounds too good to be true, I'll dare you to show up to the workshop. But please do. It's a lot of fun. It's love donation, meaning pay me anywhere from zero to a million and I'll be happy. I want everyone in there so they can all know what this is. So please show up for the workshop. Thank you.
you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Perfect song for his talk. Um, so I'm going to ask, it's time for prayer to close up the talk, and I'm going to follow Reverend Bonnie's lead. Any practitioner, and you're all practitioners, that would like to encircle the room in this moment so that we can pray, you're welcome to stand up and be one with. Thank you. The power of prayer, the power of community, the power of oneness. And so just stepping into this space and place and looking around at all these dear hearts, each and every one of you in this room, those of you on Zoom, knowing that there are no accidents, that we were each meant to be here this morning and listening to these wonderful words, being the noticer in our lives, knowing that that journey from our head to our heart, that awareness is already happening. And now we get to move it along and be aware and be thankful for that journey from our mind to our heart, knowing that our heart has already forgiven whatever needs to be resolved, refined, and released. It's already happening in this moment, even before we walked into this space and place. And just so grateful knowing that the day continues and more is revealed. Uh, and I invite you to put that smile on your face and to be reminded that as you be, you are perfect. As you be, you are whole. As you be, you are loved and you are love. And so releasing these words, these thoughts, this time, this energy, just releasing in this moment to allow that that's already taking place to continue to flow out with that ease and grace that Brian reminded us of. And sitting in that content, happy, with a smile on our face and in our hearts as we say together, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you. The song is called I Am Light by India Irie Simpson. And uh, it's got this affirmation, I am light, a lot. So I welcome you to sing it or speak it or along with me if you'd like. in my head I am not the pieces of the brokenness inside I am light I am light I am light I am light I I'm 
not the mistakes that I've made or any of the things that caused me pain. I am not the pieces of the dream I left behind. I am light. 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 I am not the color of my eyes. I am not the skin on the outside. I am not my age. I am not my race. My soul inside is all the I am light, I am light, I am light, I am light, mm. I am divinity defined, I am the God on the inside, I am a star, a piece of it all. Am light. <sighs> the brightness in this room. We are the light. Now is the time when we can. Thank you, Sarah, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Now is the time when we consider our giving back to this center, our tithe recipients. Um, oh, we received a thank you from Tents to Rat. Oh, I was wondering. A program at, at Community of Hope for our tithe gifts. This month is Messiah Valley Habitat for Humanity, and they work in partnership with local organizations, businesses, and people everywhere from all walks of life to develop communities with people in need by building simple, decent homes in Las Cruces, where people can live and grow into all that God intended. And so I asked for a couple of volunteers to pass the plate, if you'll um, come and join us up here in front to begin with. Thank you, Beth, and new director of Doniana Arts Council. <laughs> So if you'll join me with our blessing. There we go. Here we go. All together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, as me. Thank you. You're ready. You're in charge. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. I am so blessed, I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed.
so it is. Uh, just uh, an invite, a reminder that uh, some of you may brought a little sandwich to have before uh, Brian's workshop begins. His book, Access the Real You, Touching Your Divinity and Applying Its Wisdom to Your Life, evolved from years of implementing his soul connection at will um, workshop series, W-I-L-L, -L, as opposed to W-I-L, will. Sorry, I am a comedian. <laughs> uh, the workshop he will do here after the service starts about 12.30. These workshops place participants in that uh, namaste place whenever desired, enhancing every relationship in their lives and becoming clearer vessels for the divine to work through as us, as us, every aspect of our lives improves. And remember, if you need a prayer, Practitioners are here to pray with you after service. And thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you, Reverend Bonnie, for letting me be up here this morning. That's it. It's done. I am complete. <laughs> okay, we're going to go out and shine. I invite you to stand if you'd like. <laughs> You know the time is right 